Okay, so to begin with, we are going to need to install a number of packages today. Okay, um, so the first one, so um, if you, so this is going to be chapter, I think, 11 in your book. Um, and let's see, not sure. Sorry. 12, yep, chapter 11, web scraping, which is that we uh, are going to be going through all, so, um, you know, having to pay for my, for actually pay for data, you know, makes me very uh, stingy with, you know, actually activating my Wi-Fi, you know, my, my data connection sometimes. So, um, so, yeah, so it's useful to be able to download uh, web pages. Um, and download the information so you have it to reference later, which is also good when, say, you know, the internet's out and you need to be doing stuff, you know. It's always nice to have some hard copies of movies stored somewhere on your hard disk. It's always nice to ha be able to have some inf information. I actually recently just downloaded all of Wikipedia, or well, most of Wikipedia, the text and the pictures. Uh, they, there's programs that are organized that. It's about 75 gigabytes. Uh, for just the text and the pictures, no videos or, or like, but um, it's a useful thing to have. Um, so pretty much everything is uh, deals with the internet these days and working on the internet. So that's where our focus is going to be uh, is for this. So we will need to download uh, four pack. We're going to be using four packages. Well, there's a fifth one here that was downloaded in a previous chapter that we didn't really address. So first. First thing to download, you, and these can all be installed using pip. So you want to so please open up your command line and start installing these tools. So pip install uh, piper clip is the first one. Now this one seems like a really weird one, piper as in paper clip, but instead with a pi. Uh, this one's actually very interesting. This one will enable us to have access to our to our keep to our clipboard. You know the thing you use with Control C and Control V. This will give us, this will basically allow us to hook straight into that. Um, okay, another thing we'll want to install is, um, this one's very important, requests. Um, which, as you can see, I've already installed it. Now, that will be a number of things. So there is something called URL lib2 in Python and that does a lot of what request does, uh, which is basically that we will be able to request web pages using requests and read web pages using requests. I've used that, and I've used requests. I like requests a whole lot more. It's a whole lot simpler to use. Uh, this is, so if you want to get a web page from something, you want to use the request li library, okay? So this enables us to get, get uh, I, that. A web browser is an interesting one. You don't have to install that. That one's already pre-installed with Python. We're going to start out with that one. And that allows you to open up a web browser. It's very it's very simple as to what it does. Requests, yes. In, uh, URL lib2, no, that's already installed with Python. Requests just simply does that better. Um, yep, beautiful soup four. So this one, uh, I've always had trouble spelling beautiful for some reason. Uh, so, but pip install b a u c. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Soup. I don't know why it's called that. Four. Specifically four. I don't know if there's a five yet. Mm -hmm. English is a terrible language. All right. And then we'll go on to, and then we'll tackle Selenium. We'll install Selenium if we need it. But this one is a much more powerful version of web browser. It launches and controls a web browser. It is able to fill in forms and simulate mouse clicks and also key presses on your browser. So my essentially my goal for this is that I am going to my current uh, goal right now is that I'm going to spend the next couple of days really looking over this chapter and then once we're done with this, I'm really kind of done with this book. Uh, after that, we're going to look at just having some fun with the Pi game back with the Pi game uh, library. Pi game. Well, GUIs, I don't do GUIs much. Uh, they're, they're, uh, 
the book really doesn't go into GUIs, and honestly, for the scripts you need to write, you don't really need them. Uh, we're going to learn how to write. We're going to be writing some actually very interesting small scripts that are just that are common tasks that are tedious. So the first thing that the uh, author talks about is that um, the web browser um, uh, module, which is pretty straightforward as to what it does. So um, I will open it up in idle. Sorry, I'll open it up in um, PyCharm. But you can do this all in idle. Okay, It's fairly straightforward um, package. Okay. There we go. So let's go ahead and go to open recent ITB. All right. So now new Python file. Um, let's call this just, uh, yeah, let's go with the name that he's going to go with. Uh, map it. .py. Okay. So first thing we want to do is import our web browser. And we're just going to take a look at what we can do with this. Okay. So web browser, so if we type in web browser.open, we've got, obviously there's some other things here that it's got uh, this. Now this will, oh, so this, uh, so we're really going to be starting with stuff that really just hooks into other parts of your computer rather than just working independently. Webbrowser.open does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, op it will open a new web browser at the, pa at the page you specify. specify. So um, let's go with light. Dot, I'm going to go with uh, text.npr.org, which I'm going to be using a lot these days for it. Um, for our um, for our demoing because it's a very simple web page. Um, waiting for that, it wanted to open that up in that. So it opened it up in in Internet Explorer because it didn't know what it was doing, uh, really because I didn't specify what protocol it was was. So let me specify the protocol. Right, HTTP colon slash slash. Actually, HTTPS these days it should be used for everything. Most websites will only use do HTTPS these days. And that will open it up in my web browser. And there we go. Uh, there's the today, there's today's headlines in very, ba very basic HTML. Very, very basic HTML. Let me go ahead and zoom in. Very, like, this is a very, very basic website. Um, I like this when I'm, if I need to read the news while I'm on the go, which is very rare, because this is the entire web page. Right, it's just essentially the text and a little bit of formatting. There's not much there for me to uh, to mess with. Whereas I'm, if I'm looking at the actual NPR web page, so if I actually look at NPR.org, right, we have a to let's go ahead and see views. Yeah, sorry, where is view page source? Just had it. View page source, there we go. That's a lot more to parse through and look at and a lot more for my web browser to download, right? I like I like small websites, especially when I'm on data, when I'm, when I'm not working on a wireless connection. But anyway, opening up a website like that um, is fairly straightforward. Uh, if I run this program again, by the way, let's see what happens. Some interesting question. It opened up a new tab by default. Um, but there's also an open, I think, tab command, open new tab command, which opens up a new tab. And then there's an open. Sorry? Yeah, yeah there's a few options. Yeah, open and open tab. Open it up. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we. It could be what the behavior of my of my browser by default, right? Open tab. Go ahead and see. Yep. 
Yeah, I had it at open earlier. So by default, it's going to just open up a new tab, uh, at least on Firefox, right? Firefox is a lot less resource intensive than Chrome. I mean, these days, pretty much everything's uh, resource intensive, which I hate. I hate it. I hate. I hate it with the passion of a burning. Uh, uh, I, I hate it a lot. That basically that my. Um, yeah, the browser opens up a lot of stuff, and I suppose, and that's mainly. They're trying to make the browser basically open. That's the same point I think you're open. Well, let's see. I don't even have it open right now, so let's see. Um, it's it's all, I mean they so that's four hundred. That's half a gig right there that it opened up with. There's no need for that. Um, I mean. So, all right. So others. So anyway, um, so that's really the only thing that it can do. Uh, so, but we could. But it points out that there's actually a lot you can do with that. Like a lot of times, if you're trying to copy a street address, right? You have to go open it up. Right? You have to open the web browser, type in uh, maps.google.com, right? Right. And then if I have a um, what you call it a an address to go to, like, um, let's just go ahead and say, um, let's go with a landmark, Liberty Bell, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, right? Right, I have, if say I had that somewhere else, I'd have to open it up and uh, type it in over here and then get that, right? So we're going to write a basic script that basically says, hey, uh, I'm going to, you can type this program in like this, right? And then give me an address over here. Um, let's go with it. Now we're going to be silly, but we're going to be very simple about this. So statu nap it. you can type in an address, and then it will open up a new tab. Or, even better, you already have the address copy pasted into your clip copied into your clipboard. It will read it from your clipboard and open it up. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the first, so the, the other, so we need another package for this one. So we need two more packages for this one. Sys, and which we haven't really dealt with much, and we need um, what we call it. We need also the Piper clip that we just downloaded. So the first thing we need to understand about is command line arguments, right? So let's go ahead and start out by talking about command line arguments, uh, which are stored in the sys.argv, which we'll just simply by which we'll simply print out right now. So if I run this, it'll say it'll print out the basically URL, sorry not the URL, but the file location of the script I just ran. Right, everybody see that? This is uh, I'm working in Mapit. Right? That's in C colon uh, slash users Andrew classroom IDP Mapit. So these are so the argument argv are arguments passed in via the command line when you run the program. By default, the first very first argument is the name of the program. So I'm going to go and switch the command line, and I'm going to go ahead and go to our directory. Right, CD uh, classroom ITP. Okay, now if I do map it dot py Python, right, is the command to run my run it. You might need to use Python for map it dot py. Um, hello, this is sorry. Let's go with uh, these are arguments. Hello, these are arguments, right? So the first argument is all, so the argument at index zero is always, so sys.argv is the list of all the command line arguments for the program. The first argument is always the program name. That's at index zero. We typically don't consider that the first argument though. Uh, the other arguments are hello, these are arguments. They're split by spaces, right? Typically you get stuff like this where, you know, Here's another example of, of a program taking in a command line argument. Here's ls, the ls command, which lists all the files in the directory. Okay, better example 
uh, would be maybe opening it up in Bash, right? But you can't see that. Um, let's see. LS, yeah, Bash over here. So if I do LS here, right, it lists all the files we have. But I can provide it with a command line argument such as dot app dash l to tell it to list it, right? It looks at the command. It looks at the command and says, "Oh, now I know how to display it. Display it because I saw that." And if I put in dash lh, human readable text size is and stuff like that. So, um, so we've got all these command line arguments that we can uh, mess with. So. Um, the important thing is actually being able to tell, do we have a command line argument, right? So if we have a command line argument, we are going to read it. So if uh, sys.argv, if, if the length of that is greater than one, in other words, if there's something more than the command, than the command line, than you know, the name of the thingy in there, name of the program in there, we're going to print, uh, let's just go ahead and print out what they are, sys.argv. Everything but the first word, right? Everything but the, the but the name, okay. And then I'm just going to have a print done just so we know it got that we ran it, you know. So if we run this, it's, of course it's going to say done because we can't really do command. We're, it's we're not going to be doing command line arguments in here unless we actually like run, modify our configurations or something like that. So. <laughs> Um, so now if I do Python 3 or Python map it dot py and then I do hello how are you goes hello how are you now list those as a bunch of uh, as just one argument now, typically an address, right, if we're copying it, it's separated by a bunch of spaces, right, already. It's one argument rather than a bunch. But again, we're trying to make this as simple for us as, as uh, for us to use. We don't want to change our argument when we're pasting it in. So what we're going to do is that instead we're going to just take, uh, we're going to take that and we're going to join it together in a bit. So the alternative is, is that, that we want to, if, if we don't type in something, we want to be able to use the clipboard to get something, right? Else, print. So how do we use the clipboard? Well, you use PiperClip, and you use the dot paste command. So copy something not embarrassing into your clipboard like this, and then I'm going to go ahead and run it, and it should say print done, because that's what I just copied into the clipboard. I'm going to copy the program into my clipboard, right? And it says import web browser sys piperclip, right? And so it prints out the enti the entirety of my um, of what's stored in my paperclip. I'm sorry, my uh, in my clipboard. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Will this work? Map it. All right. Yeah. So it runs it. It just doesn't like to. It just opens it up in code. Okay. So obviously that won't really work. All right. So um. Yeah. I don't know why it's, it does that in Windows, but whatever. All right. So we've got. A way to get so if the user pastes the command in, right? If they just paste the command into the command line or type it out the command of the command line, we now have a way of printing that out. Uh, otherwise, we can, you know, uh, get that another way. So otherwise, we can get it from the clipboard. So if they pass it in, we'll say the address is equal to sys.argv1. Right. The, if they if they put in command line, then the, if they put an address in the command line, we'll get it that way. 
otherwise we'll say the address is what we paste in from the clipboard, right? Um, now we'll just print the address. So let's go ahead and say my, let's go ahead and write an address out. Um, let's see, 525 um, ABC Street. Um, nowhere, Ohio. Okay, so I'll copy that. It's in my clipboard. I don't pass in a command line argument when I write when I write this. So it pat, so it type so it prints out five twenty five ABC Street, nowhere, Ohio. Okay, that's really not fair to that's not fair to Ohio. There we go. So, okay, the, um, <laughs> all right, um, apologies to all North Dakotans, um, <laughs> all right, so the, um, so the, so now we've got uh, the address. So now we've got an address. Now we actually have to be able to open it, like in Google Maps or something. So let's go ahead and see how uh, Maps works, right? Uh, Maps is actually fairly simple. It's got this whole complicated thing after it, like. But actually, it's www.google.com/maps/places. Let's go ahead and actually disable the color because the color. I tried playing around with this Firefox color thing, and it ended up being less readable for you guys than I would hope. Sure, that works plenty well. All right. So, but interestingly enough, if I put down like maps.place Ohio, it figures out Ohio. That's I really don't think that's actually represented the state, but okay. Um, but if I go with uh, like Chicago, um, Illinois, right? I can just put in Chicago, um, let's see what happens if I, oh, I can't even spell it, Illinois, there we go, Chicago, IL, if I put that over here with a space, it works. So it works with just put, putting in any address with a space, and it will go ahead and just parse it out into the format it wants, which is pretty nice. So I can put anything I want here. Uh, is that a place? Anywhere USA? Nah. But if I go and put in, uh, but if I put in, you know, Minato. To Tokyo. You know, it figures that out fairly well, right? So, and then when I go over here, that's when it decided to expand it. So we can paste in whatever we address we need. So this makes this program actually really easy to do. All we have to do is just uh, make sure that the address, um, that actually that this needs to be a, that if we're pasting it in, it needs to be. Right. This will give us a list as our address, which is not what we need. Instead, we just need to turn that list into a string, which we'll do by doing address is equal to space dot join address. All right. So now, um, so now if I go ahead and open it up over here, right? I can go to I can say Python map it. py um staten island new york new york and no oh right we still have to open it we still have to open it in the web browser of course so now how do we open it in the web browser web browser dot open. Yep. And then, well, address will just give us the address. So we actually have to, yeah, we have to combine it with the, with the Google URL. HTTPS 
colon slash slash uh, www.google.com slash maps slash place slash and then just plus the address. That's exactly right. And so now if I run this, it, it does throw in, it does look for ABC Street, Nowhere, Pennsylvania, uh, Nowhere, North Dakota. What about uh, Temple University, Japan campus? So why don't we go ahead and grab this, right? So I put this into the, cop I put this into the, uh, our clipboard. I'm going to run it. And it pasted this into here, and it looks for Temple Japan campus. It doesn't really do a good job of it, even though that's what it asked for. But if we hit directions, nope. Even though that's what it asked for. Ah, why don't we try this address? Copied that to clipboard, right? But we're assuming you copied it from somewhere else, kind of the idea. Yep. All right, it's actually a fair, there's actually a lot that goes on in that small, simple grip, uh, uh, simple script, right? If, the, if we have command line arguments, open it up in the web browser. Uh, open that address up in the web browser, right? Grab it from the command line, turn the command line list into a single string, right? Otherwise, get what you have from the clipboard because we assume you've just copied it from somewhere, right? Like from a Word document or something. Because otherwise, you know, so this is like, it's at the same time both useless and useful depending on your workflow. Python, map it, right? And then we're going to say Temple University. Oh, if I could spell it, universe salty. Python. Dot, there we go. Temple University. Philadelphia, PA. And now if I run it, really doesn't like me being that. Is it just because I'm in Japan? It might be. Um, let's see, let's go with, is it, yeah, there's no com, ah, right, well, I put commas in, right? I have comma right over here. I don't know why I didn't put, I don't know why it didn't put the commas in. It likes the commas. Space dot join. Ah. Perhaps this. Perhaps this is the reason. No. Nope. Well, it just did Temple comma University. So obviously we want to join it with the spaces. So um, let's look for. Let's see. Uh, I tried that. Let's see. Mm. Yeah. App, a new. Well, it works. I, I, it works for for 1400 Pennsylvania Avenue, so that's useful. So anyway, I'm not sure why it wasn't working for that previous example, but this is a fairly simple program, right? And it allows us to interact with both our keyboard and sorry, with our with our, you know, allows us to work interact with our keyboard and so, uh, sorry, with our clipboard and web pages. So let's talk about uh, web pages and um, requests, right? So to um, import it, so let's talk about how do we get a web page. Like how do I actually read a web page from, from the web? Um, 
So, and I'm very interested, so make sure you've imported requests. So I'm going to clear. Okay. Um, and I'm going to delete my, what I already have over here. And then you're going to show for us in a second, but like how big, how much code did it take for you to download the Wikipedia stuff? Oh, that was me hitting a download page. I let somebody else figure that one out for me. Okay. Most of the, they, 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 they put those into like, uh, and they put those into pre-made programs essentially. And then hand you a torrent file. So, so Python. Um, so let's go with the Python. We're going to import. Actually, so I'm going to exit so that it appears on my desktop. C, uh, cd uh, dot dot slash dot dot cd desktop. Okay, Python. Here we go. Um, import requests. All right. So. Um, Rest is equal to, so response is equal to requests dot, um, I think it's open. That's why I have a textbook, right? It's get. Requests dot get. Easy. Okay, requests dot get, and then you pass in the web page that you want. Okay. Yep. So HTTPS colon slash slash, I'm going to go with text dot mpr.org. So it takes a second for me to just basically, it grabs it in the response. And if I type out, if I type out res, that means uh, I get a response 200. That means that's a code. So that's important. So, uh, so So response to code 200. These are HTTP status codes. So HTTP is the protocol that we're transferring stuff with. So uh, 200 is, it's OK. These were all clarified on requests for comments, which are a bunch of boring stuff. 201 is created. 202 is accepted. Uh, the most famous one is uh, the most famous ones you'll find because you see them. You literally will see them when they happen are 404. For not found, for not found, and 403 for forbidden. Right, you can't get it. Right, 403, 404 not found. Right, and many pages have custom 404 pages. I actually am a big fan of NPR's for uh, 404 not found page. NPR. Four hundred three is forbidden. So, like, if I go to npr.org slash foobar, right, it's going to give me a four hundred four not found error, right? Page not found, right? That's a four hundred four uh, error. But it says, hey, if it's a shame your page is lost, but you should check up, up for these stories for things that haven't turned up, right? Like Amelia Earhart or your luggage, you know, velocity is, you know, so stuff that you don't find essentially. So. These are, um, so I thought that was a really clever 404 page. Um, and really, if you ever end up building a website, be clever and playful about it. With, you know, it, 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 so it will pay off. So basically, um, so, right, you can get the status code for this, uh, res.status uh, underscore code. That's gives you the 200. And requests, um, as part of it, it stores um, all the codes, dot codes, lookup codes, right? And then OK, it'll say that's 200. Uh, let's see, not found. Is that underscore? 404, right? So again, it's the whole embedding things into text so we don't have to. Um, so it embeds, it, it embeds ints into variables so you don't have to remember them off the top of your head, right? Because you probably don't remember what forbidden is necessarily. Really, right? So that's nice. So, sorry? Nice. So the um, RES, um, so here, that's a response, though. Um, 
So the question is like, what's inside of a response, right? And the answer is the text. RDS dot T, that's what we came here for, which is the HTML web page, right? It downloads, so effectively, right, when you go to a web, a, a website, right, like this one, which is, again, I'm going to the special one, this, this very basic one, text.mpr.org, right? Your browser sends a request and it grabs this file, right? Now, what the job of the web browser is, is to turn this file into this. It renders, it takes this and renders this, just in the same way a doc file is a bunch of zeros and ones that get rendered into something you can actually read. The difference is that HTML is meant for you to be able to read. Right, it's meant for well, a person being able to a code or at least be able to read. It's less readable these days, okay, um, because you get you, we there we end up you know having a lot of automated tools that that do that job for us, which is not a bad thing, right? So um, so how do I go ahead and download? This? So how do I actually save this? Um, Right? Oh, and because it's a string, you can slice it and stuff, which is not too exciting. Um, the, so the URL they use, by the way, is going for Romeo and Juliet, is copy of Romeo and Juliet, right? Which is just a text file, so it would just show up as, you know, text. We went for an HTML page because it's an HTML page, and we're going to learn how to parse that. So first, um, though, you probably want to be able to save it for a local copy. Um, also, if you have a 404 not found error, before we do that, you can get you can automatically you can cause an error if there if you think there's going to be an error. So raise for I think it's code raise for so raise for status raise for status right, which will says if that response caused a 404 error, it would crash the code right. It's a way for you to crash if I did something like uh, this right it's a 404 response so now if i do rds raise your status it causes an error right as opposed to us to try as opposed to us tr uh continuing trying to read that which is probably not the greatest idea in the world okay so there i'm grabbing the web page again um so how do i write it so how do i do this well i'm gonna have to write a file uh, so I'm going to go with a file called, uh, I'm going to create a file object called web page, which I'm just going to do, do with open, right? Um, so, you know, open, let's call it uh, headlines. Now this is an HTML file, so I'm going to save it as an HTML file. And the other interesting thing you want to do is not just write it, but you want to write it as a binary file. Why? Because we want to be able because this helps uh, keep the Unicode encoding. Okay. So we open up that file, and now what I can do is that I can let's see if there what I can do actually. Uh, web page dot uh, write right to write it to there. See if I can just do res dot text. Can we? No. It says we need byte like objects. So instead, what we're going to do is actually a fairly straightforward thing. Uh, for chunk in response, basically for a bit of free, basically the web page got it, it can be split up into binary chunks. So for each chunk in the response object, web page dot write the chunk. And notice it said this is how many bytes it. This is basically, I think, it's bytes or kilobytes. Bytes, I'm going to presume, because it's fairly small. So it just wrote a bunch of chunks for us. Let's see, did I put anything onto the page, onto the web page? Not yet. So um, what we need to do instead is now, of course, that we've wrote the file, we have to close it. Web page dot close. And now if I double check this file over here, it'll, now you're like, well, that's the same page, web page you had. 
But look at the URL up here. It says file colon slash 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 C drive slash user slash Andrew slash desktop. So this is the, um, and notice that the links aren't going to work here because they're looking for, it's looking for, there these are, these are relative paths, not local paths. Not absolute paths, so these are linked. Look, in other words, it's saying wherever this is hosted, look on the same web page for this, right? We had a bit of an error here for the encoding, right? Um, you'll find that basically that that's that these that symbols like these they tend to be a bit of a pain in the butt, but otherwise it's it's you know, but it's not also just this text. Remember, it's being rendered. Right? It's rendered like this. The color, by the way, isn't actually there. That's my web browser trying to be awesome. Right? My web browser gets to be awesome in a whole lot of ways. Um, you can open up your web browser and actually look at it. And it actually now says, hey, you've got an HTML web page head. And now I'm talking about HTML, which I almost know nothing about other than it's split up into head and body and there's, and there's parts to it. So we're going to go ahead and just do a little bit of HTML. Uh, of learning what HTML is. Because we're not really going to learn how to write HTML. It's a pain in the butt. Use another tool for that. Don't like handcraft it. You know, you don't need to be, you don't need to make artisanal HTML or anything like that. Um, but anyway, going back to downloading uh, stuff. It suggests like here's the absolute minute, like this website that I wrote, that I read, sorry, that I read here, that they wrote in this book. This is a very good article on what you need to learn about Unicode and the way it works. What page is that on the book? It, uh, in the book, it's according to this 239, I think. So, so, so here, all they did was is that they, instead of doing four chunk in RES, they did four chunk in iter content, which is they just simply set, he specified how many, how big a chunk he wanted. Okay. So HTML is fairly straightforward. There's a couple of different uh, guides for learning HTML because, uh, right, so this one is apparently no longer valid. So, tutorial HTML, getting started with HTML, right? So, um, it's also very important to understand to know that basically, so we've learned about regular expressions and those are regular languages, okay? Um, HTML is more powerful than a regular language. Um, it is a context-free language, um, uses a context-free grammar, which means that basically, uh, in layman's terms, what this means is, remember how we talked about regular expressions, they kind of fail whenever they have to deal with parentheses matching, right, and that kind of stuff? Well, HTML can embed things, it can make lists of lists of lists and stuff, right? And if you can do that, you're kind of in a, you know, and kind of like be able to escape where you are in that, then you're probably in a context-free grammar, I think. This is, a, again, but the point is, is that basically that this whole embedding and parentheses matching, that's a pain in the butt. Uh, for, um, there, there's a very good, right, there's a point, there's a link over here that says, hey, don't use regular expressions to part HTML. There's an argument here on Stack Overflow why you shouldn't do it, right? Reg HTML cannot be parsed by regex. Regex is not a tool to correctly parse HTML. Uh, regex regular expressions are cannot they are not sophisticated enough. H HTML is not a regular language and not can be and cannot be parsed by regular expressions, right? And it goes on in the same vein until basically it you know it, it goes on in this vein yeah, for some time, right? Um, don't don't don't. <laughs> Don't uh, do regular expressions in HTML unless it's like for a very very limited purpose, right? It's not gonna it's not gonna work. It's, uh, it's, a, it's linked to you in, in this. Don't use regular expressions to parse HTML, right? So instead, what you will want to be doing is using a HTML parser like Beautiful Soup to do that. Okay, um, so HTML is a uh, Fairly straightforward, right? Uh, basically, it's um, we can. It's just a file, plain text, right? I'm going to go ahead and make some plain text 
in HTML. Like, let's go ahead and uh, start by doing that. So new, uh, going to create a text document here. And instead of calling it text document text, I'm going to call it my page dot html right and now I'm gonna have to open it with something else I'm gonna open it with code because it's kind of made for this kind of stuff so uh, let's go with uh, hello world and saving that right save it open it up and it says hello world if I look at the page source that's all it is html is fairly straightforward uh, but what you it's what you can do with it that matters like um like that. So let's see. Ooh, it gives me uh, completion. Like M. Let's see. I think what what does that do? Emphasis. So E M for emphasis, and then slash E M. Right. And notice the greater than and less than signs in there. Yep. Let's go ahead and just do that to the uh, world part. Right. So. So let's go ahead and now uh, refresh this web page. Oh, that's the source, so that won't do us good. So emphasis actually is defined as italics, apparently. So um, H1? Ah, strong is something like this. So let's go with uh, strong over here. And and that bolds it, right? You can add basic stuff like that, but that's you know that's just marking up language. It's not stuff. Um, these days, if I want to make simple HTML, or like simple stuff in HTML, I'll use a language like Markdown, which is even simpler and that can be rendered into HTML into HTML pretty quickly. Uh, so what would you use if you were going to just make the web page? No, I'm not sure. I've never had to build one. I'd probably use some kind of. I mean, it depends on what my purpose is. Um, I, I, I really wouldn't know because I don't do that kind of things. Yeah, there's some pretty. Yeah, yeah, there's some like. So if you if you're if you want something quickly. You can pretty much shoot like Google has web pages you can host pretty simply like uh, like sites.google.com. Right, if I need something really really quickly, like there's one that um, I yeah that's one for faculty that we so let's go ahead. Um, I don't need here we go sites.google.com. Um, right. Uh, this one I was. This one shouldn't be logged in to the temple email. Looking for sites outside. Yes, there we go. Sites that sites. Hey, create a site. And I guess new sites. Sure. Let's see how that works out. And you can throw up a website pretty quickly that way. So what, what do you do that? Like your specialty? I do distributed hash tables, and I do teaching you guys how to do stuff. Um, I do stuff like Python, and I do stuff like the back end for. Uh, I. <laughs> yes, I, I that actually closer to the model, the model, the um. Well, I mean, I again, I don't do work with the web much. I, I or at least none. I don't work with w. I don't work with hypertext pages that much. I I they 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 are. There, it's not that they're beneath my concern because divide, creating nice looking web pages is really, really, really hard. It's really hard. I'm going to pay somebody else to do that. Okay. Um, if I want to, if I, but, um, you know, this is uh, essentially a way to create a, uh, a website, right? That's fairly straightforward. Um, most websites are fairly simple. Like, that the most you'll probably need is something like a resume or something. Um, And, and I'm also a big fan of just doing some stuff that's fairly simple. Not necessarily as simple as this, but fairly lightweight and easy to hit on a browser. 
because if I'm going to be posting resources, I want them to be accessible to basically everybody in the world who's not necessarily got a 3G connection, right? Uh, the, the resources are hungry these days, but that gets into a different philosoph philosophical choice. Uh, but it is really easy to toss a web page together for free these days. Very, very, very easy. And it just depends on what your objective is. Like what you would use depends on what your objective is, right? Um, you know, so, so anyway, there's, so there's not too much to do with an HTML. It's basically a bunch of tags Im embedded in stuff. The big thing that we uh, that we use for tags are the um, is the anchor, uh, the A over here, which is used to actually make each the, do the hypertext that makes the hypertext, you know, markup language an actual thing. So let me go ahead and uh, go back to putting that in. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at. Let's go ahead and make a link. This is a link, okay? So to do that, I need to do A, and then separated by an href equals, and then I put the website in there. Uh, let's go ahead and go with a link to my YouTube channel, right? Hopefully it doesn't come up with too much embarrassing stuff on here. Yeah, I'm in Japan, so I'm getting it's trying to figure out what the heck I'm I want to watch with this. So it's suggesting J-pop uh, because I don't actually try to use this for anything I, I, other than uploading videos. I watch stuff on another on another stuff. But there's my channel, right? Um, so I can dump that link in there. It's it's automated as much as possible. So here's a link, right? Period, right? And this is what makes hypertext, you know, hypertext, hypertext, meaning that you can click on stuff, right? And it will uh, pop up as a, um, you know, it pops up as essentially another, as a, another website. So let's go ahead and open up my, up this. Hello world, this is a link. Honestly, that looks, um, not so great. We're gonna actually put that out into a into a paragraph on its own, which is colon p, uh, which is a p for paragraph, right? So you can separate stuff into paragraphs, right? So now we can do like that. This is a link. And now if we click on the link over here, if we hover over it, it says it's the YouTube channel. I click on it, it brings me to my YouTube page, right? Nothing too exciting over there. Um, so another thing that I've learned to do for, uh, for, because a lot of your stuff is in HTML, uh, you can put stuff, uh, in code right over here, like, uh, code, right? This is computer code. This is stuff that basically should be put in code. Um, so here's like, hello world in Python, print hello comma world. Right, and now if I refresh the page, it comes out in Courier, right, because it's monospace. And typically what I do is I do something like this, free, and then, let's see, let's see, I think I do pre-code and then code pre for you guys, but that's just simply depends on how it renders over here. Yeah. That's not, that's not going to do anything for you. I don't think it's going to do anything here. There's no styling involved here right now. So um, a lot of also how it stuff renders depends on like using CSS, which are style sheets, to be able to just figure out how things, uh, which gives it more information on how it renders. But this is essentially what we look at, what, what HTML is. And again, if we look at the source, nothing too exciting there. So let's take a look at our web our, at our headlines um, in code and then we're going to look at it. We also I could look at it in the browser just fine but it's bigger here. So um, here's what we got from NPR. 
So most, if it's a proper HTML page, it's going to tell you it's HTML like this, right? Over here on the top, HTML, and then it's going to end up by closing HTML. Notice how that's entire, that entire, it says this, all this stuff in here is HTML, which is important. It might not be an HT, it might not be HTML. Uh, head, uh, right, title, text only NPR, meta, t uh, name robots, no index, no follow. Interesting. Telling robot something. Uh, viewpoint, right? This is for how do we tell it to view. The body, this is the important stuff. Some JavaScript over here, which has nothing to do with Java. Then, then the actual content, right? Text only NPR paragraph. Go to and see here an href, which is what we recognize, and it's a paragraph. And then we've got home, the top stories, paragraph, and paragraph. UL, hmm, what's UL? It's a list of items where the order of the items is not important. We're changing the art. So it's a, basically it doesn't care about what the order, un, an unordered list, right? It doesn't care about the order that the items are in, right? It all cares about the items. And then LI for a list item, right? So this is a list item to the Supreme Court appointment, right? Who is the Supreme, another list item, who is the Supreme Court appointment, okay? Another list item, right? An actor. A deadline, a, a new, another news article. And an article about bees. And alpha alpha, right? Making a classical, a classic um, news journalist pun there. CD. Okay. So basically these are all lists of item of items in, in this in the story, right? And what these are is like here, right? Let's go ahead. So and find let's just find new new tri new tricks for drugs. So this is a list item, right? And inside this list item is a HTML link that you can click on, right? Right? So these are all the list item, and then these are links that you would click on. Now they don't direct to a file; they direct us to something on the same onto the web page on the same server. It's assuming that's there. Okay, so HTML is fairly um, straightforward in that manner. Um, I know I really haven't taught you much about it, but we're also kind of pressed for time today. You you want to say something? It's a, it's it is not an HTML class, uh, but we do have uh, there again. There are some really good links on there for learning about HTML to begin with, because you do want to know if you are going to try making your own website. At least you want to learn the very basics for how you would make a very 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 basic website. A uh, Codematic Academy is probably a very good link, and yeah, learn HTML. Um, see. I don't need, I don't want to log into this. Uh, Mozilla also has their own, but that's one way to do it. Mozilla also has their own good uh, website on how to make HTML. Um, so introduction to HTML, and then it will go on to CSS, which is how do you, you know, can modify your HTML, add borders and drop shadows, lay out your page better. And then the important, then the thing after here, that's actually easier now for you to learn is JavaScript, right? Which you can actually play around right now if you open up your developer console. So I think in Firefox, it's something like this, control shift T, C, sorry, for me, it's control shift C, might be command shift C or something like that. And we can just go over here into the console, right? And notice that I've got a console down here. It is very different than JavaScript. It's ECMAScript. Uh, so I'm typing in hello world down here and printed out hello world. But that, that looks a lot like Python, doesn't it? Um, X is equal to 5. Well, that's a lot like Python. Uh, print. Can I do print X? Nope. Got to do print X like that. Hey, it printed out 5. Um, 
5 equal equal x? That's true. Right, right, right. But, but the point I'm trying to point out is that a lot of the stuff that you just learned in this class carry over to another programming language. Right, 5 equal equals x. Um, how do you create, but, you know, so this is just a console over here. So we're not doing anything uh, too interesting. What about a list? Can I make a list? L is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Oh, it calls it an array instead. So an array rather than a list. Uh, L sub uh, L3, that gets me index. So L3, that gets me 4. Um, let me see. Can I? Settings. Dark style. And can I? Can I not actually make it bigger? For the love of God. I can make it dark, though, because that's super important. Um, right? So let's see. What else can I but Let's see. Can I do a 4 in? No. But 4x in L says missing the blank after the 4. So the for loops actually have a different syntax here. They have those syntax that you can put into a Java system. 4 int i is equal to 0. Nah, so it's 4, so what? 4 i is equal to 0. i is less than l dot length. I plus plus. Let's print L sub I. I somehow have a doubt. I doubt this will work. I'll print it out sub five. There is that. So obviously there's still stuff that don't carry over, but if you know a bit of it, I've never messed with it, it with uh, with JavaScript before, by the way. This is me going into it completely blind, completely blind. Never messed with JavaScript before. Okay, so the HTML, uh, but this is a guide for how do you learn HTML, right? So it assumes that you can. All this assumes is just basically stuff. But now you've kind of passed a point where basically you can start reading documents, and they assume you know a programming language. They they try not to. They try their very best not to. But it's very hard for a non-programmer to remember what it's like not to be a programmer. So now you can learn stuff like how to display this. Uh, and what's nice about this is that it's got you know like a live output. So this is my text, right? Here's my code. Uh, so I can do strong. So I can do strong over here. Right? And that will be good. So, and then if, and depending on what it's trying to do, right, you want to do emphasis. So it will show you the solution. So there's nice stuff that go, uh, that, so this is actually a pretty nice way to do this attributes it's fairly fairly straightforward um, right how do you make a web page how do you do comments in HTML so those kind of things so we're gonna learn more about beautiful soup on Thursday um, because you guys had a pretty uh, long exam so I'm sure you guys are pretty blasted from that and then um, and then I think for last week we'll focus on like playing games and stuff let's see how much do we have any more like this week and then what? Next week is, is next week the last week of classes? Uh, the 26th is the last day. No, two and a half. 26th is the last day. So we can get to learn stuff. Maybe we'll, uh, so we'll learn. I'll, I'll be learning about how to make stuff with Python. Are these shorts? Almost a month. Yeah, I thought, I thought, I could have sworn that we've got our last. Cool. Yeah, so let's go ahead and look. Count. Count. Our, our final 
Is it? Oh yeah, yeah. So Count. we have, I think, laundry. Two days. Yeah. Where did you find that? Because they they haven't told me that. No, it's on the it's on the academic calendar. Yeah. Where is that? Go to admissions. Admissions. Yeah, I always had the hardest time. So summer semester. Oh, did he? Well, if you look in your email and just search like final exam. Okay, so anyways, there's the academic calendar. Right, this is so, so yeah, here we go. I think, okay, so, so yeah, there we go. So let's see, if our class is 1110 to, to 210, then your final's on... Oh, come on. Wow. Okay. Well, at least... Well, at least that gives me a... Well, at least that gives me a whole week of nothing, essentially. So... So we do actually have one... one we, we, yeah, our last day of completion class is 19. Okay. So... So final exam will be probably more of this. Um, so more, a, a lot. So similar to what we had for for the exam today, right? Okay. And then so very similar questions. Um, probably doing some more on the lines of um, that. So my plan is is that let's see, we'll do some parsing on. Um, so let's see, what should the plan? The web stuff is actually fairly basic, the part kind of parsing that I'll have you do. It's not too bad. Um, but the I haven't actually ever put web stuff on, on that. But tomorrow I'll teach you web some web stuff. We'll do some projects in there. And then we have then I'll teach you some, I think, some basic tricks. Some interesting things that you can do with Python. Uh, such as treating functions as first level citizen, as first class citizens. Uh, so then I think we'll try playing around with Pi game. So because that's a great because making games are great ways to, uh, you know, learn. They're also great ways to figure out how you know. At least when you look back, you'll go, "Wow, I did this terribly." Uh, that, and by the way, everybody does that. that. It's like, uh, yeah. all right. So anyway, I think we're good for class today. So. Does Python have boxes and it does. It does have objects. Um, give me a second. <laughs>